Morning, morning, morning. Yes, we're back with another rider, another episode. Today we have a horse. I don't know what you'd call it. I'll let him introduce himself, but hopefully we can learn something. It's in relation to horses. Here you are, mate. You got it? Yeah, all okay, good. So what's your title? We we do uh, training of race horses, basically. So we're in Epsom, Surrey, home of the Derby. I've only been doing it for four years, friend, but I have been kind of loosely involved for for as, for a, you know a good fifteen years. Okay. But, What's it take to train a horse? Well, you need someone who's grown up with it and, and that understands horses and lives with horses. That's not me. I come in from more of a racing background of kind of you know the form, entering it in the right race, this kind of thing, but... So, um, when you said someone had grown up with it, but you come in on a different angle, surely your angle involves knowing the horse as well? Yeah, you know the horse, you take what you see on the gallops and what you know of the horse, and then you take the weight and the probability and you want to give it its conditions that it wants, and then as a result, you're hoping it's going to win. From when a horse is born, how long before you can race it? So, obviously they're born, you can buy them at about one years old, you can start racing some at two years old. It all depends. The bigger the horse, the longer the time it's going to take. If it's a big horse, you shouldn't really be racing it at two. You might give it one run for education, but realistically, you can start at two, but jumpers will start at four. You know, but two years old is the earliest you can start. Um, what's the upkeep, the cost of an upkeep of a horse? I'd say cost, it depends where you are, rental, but obviously you have to feed it. And if you're trying to compete as a professional sport, you would have to spend a lot more money on it. than Same with us, you know, if you're going to the gym and you're eating a lot of good quality food, and you're, you're a professional athlete, it's different to sitting at home and eating ready meals. So I would say cost is maybe 800 and it probably gets charged out to the customer about two, uh, two grand. Uh, and that's a month? A month, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. And you spoke about buying a horse. Don't, don't, if you're, don't you rejoin horses? Wouldn't you rejoin horses as a horse? I don't. I know people that do. Breeding is a money pit. You know, it takes a long time to conceive a horse and you need the right mares and people control the market. So you're better buying a foal, a yearling, something of a breeder than breeding yourself because the upkeep is too much. Okay. So that oh, so that's why the super rich have own horses. That's why it's Sheikh Mohammed, Dubai, you know, um lot it's, it's for the when you get involved in the breeding game you can't do it on a homebred scale you need to do it you're, you're competing with the top one percent wealth of the country, okay. so you, country. you could come into racing with 10 million it's nothing you could do that in a year you could spend all the money on nice horses this that, that whatever it doesn't matter it's a waste waste of time because you're competing with rulers of the world. What have you learned from handling horses that you wish you knew when you started? I don't do a lot of handling horses. I leave that to... The, yeah, but my, the business general, the business that you deal with... I, I, I think the most important thing is that they're animals, they're not machines, and people can look at the form or they can look at this, that, whatever, but the reality is, they are living, breathing things, and you need to make sure, obviously you get it in the right race, you need to make sure the animal's very fit, but most importantly, you kind of fried the animal's head in the process of trying to get it fit. How many, uh, I understand the horses are measured in hands. Yes. What's the largest kind of, is the largest, largest and the smallest kind of horse? Well, in thoroughbreds, like 70 hands would be very, very big. But I don't think you'd get, like, you know, you're looking 16s and 
you know. But how high is seven feet high? Do you know what? I'm not a horseman. I'm not going to pretend I am. I wouldn't okay. I'd know the answer to that okay, question. Go for it, go for it. All right. And the medical side. I can only go from what I see in movies, but it seems like it's very intricate. There's all these like yards and injections and all these kind of things. Is this an everyday factor for a horse? If you're in racing, um, like us, you could have like you could have like a you know your joints jabbed, where you're feeling better in your knees, you're feeling better in your joints. There. Medication is obviously key. It's diff. It's, it's a lot more. What? It's a lot more of a factor and a lot more important in racing in other parts of the world. Over here, we have strong regulations. You can't really um, medicate too much outside of the kind of things that we would be open to as humans. Is, is it true that when a horse breaks its leg, it's no good? And never be repaired and run again. Not really. Yeah, I I would agree. I mean, they they would struggle to survive and live and get back to themselves on three legs. Oh, okay. You know. But so that so the broken leg can't be repaired. It can be. Yeah. But realistically, it's very very difficult. But I would be honest, as I say, I come from the racing side and the form side and, and that kind of side. I wouldn't be a horseman. I wouldn't pretend to be a horseman, a stockman, or okay. a farmer, or someone who has a wide understanding of animals. Okay. My understanding with the sport comes with, you know, um, you racing, say, form. Sorry, when you say form, what, is, what are we looking at? What are you referring to? What the horse has done on the track. What track has it run out? What has it done? What has it achieved? Oh, so all the analytics kind of thing of the horse. Correct, yeah. The history of the horse. Uh, Not even just history, but just what, like, what has it achieved? What's the time? What has it done? What's the quality of the race? Being able to, being able to kind of analyse that and break, break that down. Um, like you work with horses, are you allowed to bet on horses? Yeah, you are. You're allowed to bet on your own horses as kind of trainers and owners. You can bet on your own horses. But no one else. You can bet on other people's. If you're a trainer, you shouldn't bet on other people's horses where you have runners in the race. Oh, okay. So it's not against the law, basically. It's like a it kind of is, is against the law. You shouldn't do that. It's it, they have strong regulations, so it is against the law, and you have to be very careful. In um, even though it's super rich, people, I watched a documentary about Netflix and horse, ra horse racing and where they were damaging horses. Would, would you and, and movies where you show there's a, a underworld side to the horse race? It, would you say this is? No, not at all. I think like these horses get treated like athletes and superstars and where you've seen that documentary and you've seen these things and, and you know and what people say about this is when the horses leave racing and they go out of racing and they get into the hands of other people and you see bad things happen. In side racing they get treated like five star care athletes. I said like you know, you're looking two grand a month to look after a horse, cost 800, but to train it, put a rider on it, feed it amazingly, bed it, muck it out a few times a day, that's not cheap. And um, yeah, no, it's it, it's all about the animal and these people are all about the animal. So, you know, it's when, if a horse goes out of racing, then it's in, in the hands of, of whoever, and that's when things go wrong. So, g going back to the, the finance, uh, the betting side of things, where you're allowed to bet on your own horse, and, and you're, you know, the, I forgot the word, you said the form, so the history of the horse in that sense. 
Are you, would you say that makes you a very good judge when it comes to what horse to bet on? It would help. It's very, it's very, very difficult to make money off of betting. Only a very small percentage will, and this is why bookmakers are open. You know, they're, oh, yeah, they're, 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 they're very easy to take, take the money. money be yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But if a, a very small percentage will make money, and they will probably probably be very few people approaching it the right way. And there is probably opportunities to make money, but you have to be very sensible, very shrewd, and not, it's very difficult, and you will only probably make between five and 10% of whatever you turn over, even if you're very good. So, basically, if it was taxed, it would be a waste of time. Betting is not taxed in this country. So, um, so even if you win, it's not taxed? Correct. Okay. I didn't know that. That's the best. Yeah, it's tax free. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's tax free. If a young person wants to get into the horse business, obviously not buying horses, but just being like working with horses or things like that, what, what, what's the best route for them to go around? Do they need a degree? No, you go to like the British Racing School, Newmarket, or there's one up north, I think it's Midlam or something like that. And, and you know, you can go, you, at the end of the day, if you're riding horses and you love horses, then that's an option for you. You know, there, there's, it's very easy to get into that, whether you're in the north or the south, you, you know, there's the equivalent, there's a good education to, and of course to get into that further on. Um, just the last question, you've been a great um, guest. What, if there's something you could change or improve in that whole industry, what would it be and why? Well, it needs to appeal more to the young. You need to be able to, you know, it's not just about them coming out and having a drink and going to the Grand National or the Derby or whatever. We, this sport won't be around in 20, 30 years or whatever if you can't keep the young interested. They all, football, this, that, brilliant, but if you can't actually get the young captivated by this and interested in this, then where will the sport be in X amount of time? Who knows? How would you get them, how would you encourage the young I couldn't answer that question, it's very difficult, they're trying, um, the problem with race, you, you need to give people the knowledge so that they can understand it and break it down more, if they've got the knowledge where they can actually appreciate it and um, understand the ins and outs of it, that's the main thing, if you can't understand it, you, you, you're not going to get the enjoyment out of it. Thanks a lot for that, and we wish you well. Many thanks.